All right, you've um, we've become pretty familiar with the circle in terms of degrees. What we're going to do for the next couple of lessons is talk about a new way to measure uh, circles, and that's in the measure called radians. All right, and what is a what is a radian? Well, if you consider a circle, so let's draw any circle, and and don't forget this could be any size circle. And if you think about the length of the radius, if you take this length that we'll call r, if we take that length and place it along the circumference of the circle, so let's say it's about that far, that's one radian. Okay, so the measure of the radius on this circumference is a radian. Now again, it doesn't matter how big the circle is. If you take that r and put it on a small circle, it's just going to be a smaller section of the circumference, but it's still the same sort of uh, proportion. All right? And if we put those r's all the way around the circle, how many of them will there be? Okay, and that's what this this shows right here. Let's start with this comparison here. We know that a circle is 360 degrees, and if we place those uh, radians all the way around the circle, you actually get about 6.28, etc., etc., radians. Six radians and then a part of them. The exact value for that is 2 times pi. So 360 degrees is 2 times pi. All right? As well, if we go halfway around the circle, 180 degrees, that's pi radians. Don't forget, pi is about 3.14. So that means three radians and then a little portion of a radian. Okay, and we're going to use this to sort of um, mark out a circle. But before we do that, let's try and convert. So if we know how to go back and forth. So if I have 255 degrees, I want to know how many radians that is. Okay, to do that, we have a formula. This formula is not very complicated. Based on the fact that I know that pi is 180 degrees, I can compare radians and degrees then. Okay, so I'm always going to use that ratio, pi over 180. And then where does 255 go? Is that a degree or is that a radian? Well, it's a degree, so I'll put it down here. And then I can figure out what is the measure of the angle in radians by using this proportion. Okay, and if you remember how to solve this, we can cross multiply. So I get 180 theta is 255 pi. And if I divide by 180, I get theta is 255 pi over 180. Now I've already told you that you don't need to reduce these. This will be the correct answer. But it's really good practice because sometimes it's useful to have the reduced version. Okay, so let's try to figure out how can you reduce this fraction. Now, you're not going to be able to use a calculator. So you can see that both of these numbers are divisible by 5. Okay, so if I put 5 into 255, 5 into 25 goes 5 times 5 into 5 goes 1. And how many times does 5 go into 180? I think it's 36. We can reduce this further. I think that the th 3 will divide into both of these numbers. So I get 17 pi over 12. This is the reduced measure in radians of 255 degrees. Okay, let's try another one. Again, same ratio. You're going to use this one every time. Okay, now you just have to figure out where does 300 go. Is it here or is it here? Well, because it's a proportion, it should be the same place that the degrees are in the, ori in the original. So I'm going to put 300 here, and let's solve. Okay, now I wrote the degree symbol in here. Watch what happens if I now divide by 180 degrees. Okay, so theta is, and the degree symbols cancel out because there's one in the numerator and denominator. I can divide by 10, and then I can divide by 6, so I get 5 pi over 3. All right, pause the video, see if you can do this one.
All right, and reducing it. That negative doesn't really do anything different. It's just a negative value. It means it's going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Remember, it is a measure of an angle. Okay, and if we divide the top and bottom by 15, uh, we can probably do, yeah, 15 I think we can divide by. And that's going to be 12. Okay, so I think you get the idea. I don't know, we don't, I don't know if we need to do another one. All right, let's try this now. So now we're giving the measure in radians and we're supposed to convert it to degrees. You're going to use the same ratio. The only difference is now since you have a radian, the radian is going to go up here. And you're going to find out how many degrees this is. Okay, let's cross multiply again. So I get pi theta. And then I get, if I go 180 times pi over 7, this is 180 pi divided by 7. Okay, and if I divide both sides by pi, you should see that theta is 180 over 7. All right, now just be a little bit careful. These, This is degrees, so we have to put degrees there. Okay. Let's try the next one. All right, cross multiply. So pi theta, and if I go 180 times negative two pi, I get negative 360 pi divided by nine. This I can reduce right away. 360 divided by nine is negative 40 pi, and if I divide by pi, I get negative 40 degrees. Okay, so just so you notice, I don't need a calculator for that one. Um, as soon as you see decimals, usually that means these would be calculator questions. I'm going to try to do these without the calculator, but um, sometimes you will get a calculator when you see decimals because things don't work out quite as nicely. In this case, it, it is actually fairly nice. 180 times 2.5, this is 360, 450. So I get 450 theta pi. And then if you divide by pi, you get theta is 450 over pi. All right, so there is converting radians to degrees, and, and we're going to you're going to get used to how, how big is a, de, a radian just by looking at it. You're not always going to have to convert it. Okay. Um, this next little topic is probably, it's a little bit strange. It's totally separate from everything else. And yet I've seen this question on an exam. It, it, I think every single year there's been an exam. Okay, it has to do with arc length. Okay, it says all arcs are that subtend a given angle have the same central angle. So take a look here, you have two circles, a big one and a small one, all right? And it says that there are arcs. So there's this arc and there's this arc. Obviously one is bigger than the other, okay? They will have different arc length depending on the radius of the circle. Well, you can see a bigger radius means a bigger arc length, okay? But the arc length is still proportional to the radius. Okay, this has to do with, because it's the measure of a radian. Okay, the formula which connects arc length and the central angle and the radius is right here. Now, I sometimes the formula uses an S instead of A. This is the same formula, okay? But it's basically saying that arc length, okay, this is arc length, This this measure outside here on the, circle, it's a part of the circumference, is equal to the central angle times the radius. Okay, and the trick question here, the trick in this question every time, the angle must be measured in radians. Okay, so the trick will always be, it'll give it to you in degrees, you have to change it to radians first. Okay,
So let's try this question. Determine the unknown quantity. It says find A. Maybe it says find S. It'd be the same thing. Find the arc length is what it's saying. So the arc length is the angle times the size of the radius. So A is going to be pi over 5. Is that in radians? Yes. So I can just use it as it is times 9.2. Okay, and that to me looks like a calculator question. Here's why I think it's a calculator question. Otherwise, you're going to get 9.2 pi over 5. Now, what's wrong with that? Well, the problem is that you can't have you can't have a decimal in a fraction. Okay? That's sort of like a, I don't know, call it a rule. Um, anytime you have uh, a fraction, there cannot be decimals in it. Okay, so let's go 9.2 times uh, pi divided by 5 equals. So the arc length is 5.781. Okay, let's try another one. So again, what is A? A equals theta r. A equals 115 times 4.8. Good? No. You must have the measure of the arc in radians. So I can't use 115 here. Okay? I need to figure out what is 115 in radians. So I use this formula. Right? And if I cross multiply, I get theta is 115 pi over 180. And you can see this is why sometimes it's nice to reduce, because otherwise this number looks a little bit big, and you wouldn't be able to uh, get away without a calculator there. But in this case, I see 4.8, so I'm going to use a calculator. All right, uh, let's see, I get 115 times pi times 4.8 divided by 180. So 9.634. Again, be careful. That's going to be your trick. You're going to give it, get it in degrees. You need to figure out what the answer is in radians. Okay. Um, what about this negative? Well, the negative tells you that you're going backwards with the angle. Does that affect the arc length? Probably not. The arc length is probably still positive. Usually distance is measured as a positive value. Um, I'm not going to be too nitpicky about that. You want to answer it negative positive, it doesn't matter. Let's try the last one. All right, A equals theta r, and you can see this time we don't have the angle. So we'll put this like this. And usually this question will say, what is the measure of the angle in degrees? And so you're going to do the math here. You would go 235 divided by 5.8. 235 divided by 5.8 equals. And so this is 40.5. And Let's put a few more decimals. And a lot of times, this is a mistake. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I've seen this mistake way too many times on an exam. So the angle, so it says put this answer in degrees, and the people put this as an answer. Okay, that is not the answer, because whenever you use this formula, your answer will be in radians. So this is in radians. If you want to change it to degrees, you have to use the proportion. Okay, so I'll give you a few questions to try here. All right, that, that shouldn't be too difficult. There's not really very difficult concepts there. Tomorrow's a big day, so make sure you're caught up. All right.